And today I'm going to be talking to you about the Paris Peace Conference and the expectations of this peace settlement, the terms of the Treaty of Versailles, and the response to it from the Big Four and Germany itself. Germany's expectations and the reality of the peace, Paris Peace Conference of 1919 were very different. In fact, Germany didn't have a voice at the conference. So what happened? The German delegates arrived in Paris in April expecting to negotiate, but found that they had observer status only. By April 1919, Germany's army had been demobilised. Britain's navy was still blockading its ports, while French and Belgian troops were poised on its border. In May 1919, Germany was presented with a list of non-negotiable demands. The new German government signed the Treaty of Versailles. German opinion called it a diktat, which means dictated, and branded those who signed it as November criminals. The terms of the Treaty of Versailles were negotiated by the Big Four. And the Big Four were Britain, France, Italy and the USA. They first met in January 19, 1919 to discuss the conference. France, Britain and Italy carried most weight because they had been damaged, especially France. In contrast, the USA had not really experienced much fighting. France had been attacked by Germany twice Firstly, in 1871 and then in 1914, and as, as a result of this, wanted it permanently weakened to ensure French national security. So what were the expectations of the Paris Peace Conference? Germany had expected to negotiate a peace based on Woodrow Wilson's 14 points. Woodrow Wilson was the President of the United States. Wilson's key ideas were self-determination, free trade, a general reduction in armaments, and a new international body called the League of Nations, which was designed to settle disputes. And finally, he wanted to ensure peace through collective security. According to Haidt and Hinton in 2000, Germany hoped the 14 points would lead to a fair peace. They were in for a major shock. So to just recap what we've covered, the features of Germany accepting the Allied Peace Treaty included that they had no say, so it was diktat, and those who signed the treaty, which was led by Ebo's government, were called the November criminals by the German public. And we've already covered that by April 1919, the German army was demobilised by the Allies. The main aspects of the Treaty of Versailles were territorial issues, demilitarization, reparations, and war guilt. So firstly, let's talk about demilitarization. Germany's army was cut to 100,000 troops and conscription was banned. This was a major difference from the army's size during World War I. Alongside this, there were to be no tanks, no military aircraft, nor submarines or vessels over 10,000 tonnes. Moreover, the Rhineland was demilitarised. Allied troops occupied its West Bank and would stay there for the next 15 years. A key feature of Versailles was Article 231, popularly known as the War Guilt Clause. This made Germany accept responsibility for starting the war, and so all the losses that resulted. Hence, we can see that the implications of this are huge for Germany and allies alike. Most importantly, it led to Germany paying reparations, which is a financial compensation to the allies. A commission set up in April 1921 decided that the amount Germany should pay would be £6.6 .6 billion pounds or in gold marks, which was Germany's currency, 132 billion marks. A lot of Germany's land 
were given to neighbouring nations and also their colonies were given away. So where did they go? So Alsace-Lorraine, which had been a disputed region since the first invasion in 1871, was returned to France. Eupen and Malmedy were given to Belgium. The coal-rich Saarland was given to France for 15 years. And it was decided that a plebiscite would be used to determine its future. A plebiscite is a people's vote. Poland got Poznan and West Prussia, importantly, separating East Prussia from Germany and thus potentially weakening it. The port of Danzig became a free city under the League of Nations control. Czechoslovakia was given the Sudetenland. Control of Germany's overseas colonies were given mainly to Britain and France. And Anschluss, which means unification with Austria, was forbidden. It's really important to keep in mind these territorial issues in Versailles and see how they, the legacy of this continues in Germany and is a key part of propaganda and the agenda for the NSDAP when they come to power later. So we've covered that critically Article 231, the War Guilt Clause, made Germany accept responsibility for their actions and that reparations were set at £6.6 .6 billion pounds in April 1921. In terms of the military terms, there were to be no tanks, military aircrafts, submarines or vessels over 10,000 tonnes. Germany's army was to be restricted to 100,000 troops and the Rhineland area was demilitarised. So what were the attitudes to the Treaty of Versailles? It's important to remember the devastation of World War I. To throw some stats into the ring, 1.3 million died in France, 1 million troops died in Britain, and 2 million troops died in Germany. As a result, there were millions of widows and orphans to be cared for. In terms of the wounded, 4 million were injured in France, 2 million in Britain, and 6.3 million in, Ge in Germany. If we look at infra infrastructure and their destruction, in France, 300,000 buildings and 21,000 21, square kilometres of farmland were destroyed. As a result, the most of damage in this sense was in France because the war was not fought on British or German soil. Belgium's economic losses were so large that they needed a hefty loan from the Allies to repair the damage which had been done to its economy and infrastructure. A key question which historians consider is would Germany have been less harsh if the positions had been reversed? Chancellor Bethmann von Holweg issued a memo, memo on the 9th of September 1914 that detailed the annexation of French and Belgian territory to Germany as a war aim. The Bethmann Holweg memo also said that Germany was aiming for, and I quote, a commercial treaty that makes France economically dependent on Germany. The Brest Litovsk Treaty of March 1918 required Russia to give up almost half of its European territory. According to Cavendish in 2008, the terms were very harsh. Attitudes to the Treaty of Versailles depended on the context of the country. France, we could argue, was the harshest and wanted the most punitive terms, punitive terms for the treaty. This was because 1914 was the second time in living memory that Germany had invaded France. France wanted both compensation for what had happened and to ensure it would never happen again. So Germany needed to be weakened. According to Barros in 2006, the French definition of disarmament, which was moral disarmament, required convincing controls over Germany's material capability for war. And in terms of the general reaction to Versailles, people approved of the reparations. However, there was a strong sense that Germany still threatened France. In terms of British attitudes, we can regard them as a bit more lenient relative to France. Britain's Prime Minister, David Lloyd George, did not want too harsh a treaty on Germany. And most importantly, 
This was for economic reasons, because Germany was an important trading partner for Britain before the war. However, the public mood in Britain was strongly anti-German. Hang the Kaiser and make Germany pay were popular slogans in 1919. And as Lloyd George was facing re-election in the UK in December, he had to pay heed to popular opinion. And finally, what was, it, what was the attitudes in Germany? Ultimately, Versailles damaged national pride as it reduced the size of Germany and its army. Most importantly, the war guilt clause and its reparations were deeply resented by the German people. Although you could argue that the treaty damaged Germany economically, it was a source of fuel, anger and propaganda for German nationalists, as we will see in the years to come. Furthermore, 7 million Germans found themselves living as minorities as a result of the territorial issues which were given to different countries. As the new Weimar Republic were associated with signing the Treaty of Versailles, it began to be blamed for the defeat and came culpable to the army's stab in the back myth. So how have historians interpreted Versailles? Firstly, the opinion at the time. Proust in 1923 said, the criminal madness of the Versailles diktat was a shameless blow. The Republic's constitution was born with this curse upon it. Trolch in 1919 said, this peace was possible because of the formal German declaration of war and its invasion of Belgium, thus making Germany exclusively responsible. These two interpretations are interesting as they reflect the mood at the time. Proust seemed to imply that the Weimar Republic is ultimately doomed to failure because it was birthed through the Treaty of Versailles. Trulch, on the other hand, views Germany as solely responsible and a very black and white issue. More recently, historians have presented a more nuanced picture. For example, Haydn in 1974 concluded that the ultimate failure of the Weimar Republic could not be blamed on Versailles. So in recapping, we have covered how the bethmann holweg memo and the brest treaty suggest that Germany would have been equally, if not more harsh, if their roles were reversed in 1919. And if we consider the different motivations and influencing factors upon Britain, we know that Germany was an important trading partner for Britain, David Lloyd George was facing re-election, and that the public mood was staunchly anti-German. And in terms of who gained territories due to the Paris Peace Conference, France gained Alsace-Lorraine and the Saarland, Czechoslovakia gained Sudetenland, Poland gained Poznan and West Prussia, and Belgium gained Eupen and Malmedy. And finally, to summarise Germany's reaction to the Treaty of Versailles. They were humiliated as it damaged national pride. The Treaty of Versailles reduced the size of Germany and its army. It damaged Germany economically. Seven million Germans were living as minorities in other countries. And the Weimar Republic was blamed for the defeat by the army stab in the back myth. And as a result, this was all used as a source of anger and propaganda for German nationalists. Thank you for listening as we've covered the Paris Peace Conference and next time we're going to be discussing the economic issues which faced the Weimar Republic in its early years.